The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by sportsofanarchy.com. Please visit all our site for your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by submissionfc.com. Enter the promo code SPORTSOFANARCHY10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by MMAprofit.com. Play MMA Fantasy free for the chance to win 100 bucks. We're also available to be listened to on iTunes or the Stitcher app, both of which are available on all smartphone devices. How you doing, guys, Fight Fans? I'm here with Admin Jonas. Jonas, say what's up. Hey, what's good? All right. And uh, we got a very interesting podcast to talk about, especially with uh, Jonas, because me and him are on opposite polar spectrums of this debate. So we're, we're, there's a lot of things we're going to talk about. One of the first things we'll start off with, we, have, we had an announcement uh, that happened earlier today, our time where Miracle Crow Cop has signed with the UFC. Now, that is crazy news, especially because many of the rumors had it going that he was going to go to Bellator. And according to Crow Cop's Facebook, he was going to go to Bellator. Um, that's what it read. And then the UFC caught wind of it, hit him up, probably offered more money. And, um, and of course, you know, why wouldn't you take it? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Jonas, what, what are your opinions on, on this signing? Uh, you know, it was basically... Good old UFC Dana Fertitta's giving the big old F you to Bellator. <laughs> you know, that's all that really was on their end. Crow Coffee's just looking for a check, even though he doesn't really need it. In a discussion prior to this podcast that uh, someone else went in on. But uh, honestly. You're talking about Zach? Yeah, well, Zach. Yeah. So Zach clearly believes that Crow Cop doesn't need the money. I have no reason to believe he needs the money. But, you know, if the guy retired, you know, he retired from MMA back in 2013. I believe. Retired last year and came back very shortly. What are you talking about? Crow Cop? Yeah, Crow Cop. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he retired. He came back very quickly. Uh, he's won a couple fights since. Uh, last, uh, I believe he finished Satoshi Ishii. And, uh, you know, he's 40 years old. Um, he's taken a whole lot of beatings in the UFC. He, had, he doesn't have the best UFC record. Uh, suffering from what people call him the pride curse. Um, <laughs> and let's let's just be real. He's not gonna. He's not fighting for a title ever. Yeah. In the UFC. He's basically getting it off of his name only. Which hey, you know, he's paid his dues, and you know, people are gonna watch him fight. That that much will be, you know, that much can't be debated. And uh, do I think he should be fighting? Probably not. But at the same time, I don't see, I, I see why he is. So there's really where I stand on it. Yeah, since since Kona out of that said retirement, um, he's three and one. Yeah. Two are by the same opponent though, uh, but they're all finishes. Yeah. Which starts you twice. So. Yeah. Um, he the only loss was to a, a heavyweight that's actually already in the UFC named Oleski Olenek. Uh, yeah, and he's really good. I remember we were watching that fight you and me together he where won, where he won by knockout. Yeah. yeah, that crazy insane knockout of a uh, uh, Jared Roshaw. Um, I brought this up in the last podcast, and and I'll bring it up to you now. I, m- me and Chris t- talked about how. We believe that well, – I believe – I don't know if he believes, but I believe – I don't want to speak for him. I believe that you know any fighter that wants to c- uh, come out and, and, and continue fighting and, and continue making money, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Make your money, you know, as long as there are some exceptions uh, – or not exception, but like some – like a rule set. Like first of all, you got to be healthy. And not just healthy, healthy, like, like you can just sell – like you sit in front of a doctor. He just pokes at you and he's like, okay, you're fine. No, you gotta like you gotta be really okay. You know, like I don't like Ken Shamrock still fights, and I know that that's hard to believe, right? Uh, yeah. But <laughs> he still fights. Nobody hears about it because he's just so low in the barrel. And it's not even that that's not okay. It's fine. He's making money for whatever. But I don't think he's a healthy dude. He talks. He does these interviews. He sounds muffed. He sound. He just. Uh, he, you just hear it in him. I think you need to be healthy. You know, if a doctor sits you down too and says, "Hey," and looks at your head and goes, "Hey, look at this shit. This isn't right. You should not get hit here anymore," then you should bow out. You know, you should just be able to say to yourself, "Yeah, look, I don't, you know, can't ruin myself." And I think most smart fighters are smart enough to do that. What's funny is that a lot of younger fighters are starting to do that, which is crazy. You see these guys, 
uh, 28, 29, retiring, being like, yeah, I'm uh, you know, getting hurt. And, those, uh, and I think, you know, that's kind of silly in, in a sense, but at the same time, you know, if they, if they want to stay healthy and they believe that that's the healthiest choice for them, then that's fine. You know, can't dock them for that. Um, if a fighter say Crow Cop, I, and when I was, when we were doing this podcast, I was referring more so to Anderson Silva or Rampage. I was saying like more so I was actually reacting to the Rampage signing. When, when I was thinking of all this was, you know, there are fighters that are going to come to the UFC now and you're seeing – and and, and some that, are, that have stayed like Shogun and Anderson who you just kind of get this sense like – and one other thing before I say it is Silva could fight for the title again. I don't think he should if he beats Nick Diaz coming up, you know, because that was one of the things that was announced is that if Silva beats Diaz, he might get the title shot, which I think is madness. But yeah, when that announcement came out, I, I flat out said it as soon as I heard of this. He shouldn't get one. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. yeah, he needs to make a serious one. run through the new division because it's definitely shaped up differently now than it used to be, especially, yeah, which is. Well, I mean, Silva was the bottleneck. Yeah, exactly. Silva, yeah, Silva caused the bottleneck in that division. And with his with him being gone, you got the same effect that, you know, GSP leaving, Walter Wade leaving the UFC, and what happened, you know, 170. This guy got everybody in there as a viable contender. Yeah. But, you know, you're looking at 185 now, and Silva, I mean, he got the shit beat out of him in the first fight against uh, Weidman. There's just no denying I th- that. Yeah, I and, think Silva lost every round that he was ever involved with Weidman. Of all four. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. He did, which, you know, there's just no denying that. And he did. And, uh, you know, the first fight, you know, I even – Talk to my best friend about it on the weigh-ins when, you know, you do that <clears throat> shoulder jab. Oh, yeah, yeah. On, the one to Chael? Yeah. Gets on, uh, yeah, he did the shoulder jab to Chael, but he, you know, kiss wife. You know, I I had a feeling that he was kind of not caring about winning anymore at that point. And then, you know, he fights a little bit against Weidman in the first fight. He gets clipped. He dances around a little bit and left himself open to get, you know, dropped. Mm-hmm. You know, he came, he came a lot more prepared in the second fight, and even that wasn't enough. He was getting his ass whooped in the first round of the second fight. And, you know, he threw a stupid kick, and his leg goes wrapping around Wyman's leg. <laughs> you know, that's the end of that. <clears throat> uh, has Silva come back from, you know, bad fights before? Yeah, look at the Chael Sonnen fight. He was getting his ass whooped the whole time. He found a way to win. So... But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, with, with Silva out of it, he needs to fight his way back in because he got dominated by the champion. Mm-hmm. And beating Nick Diaz doesn't warrant the title shot. But mm-hmm. then again, we've got unwarranted title shots being gifted left and right in the UFC, so why change now? Yeah, I mean, the, the point, that, uh, as I was trying to make, as to what, you know, a fighter of Silva's caliber could be doing – now that he's not the champion anymore, not even that he's not the champion, but just the fact that I think that he needs more than one fight. Uh, it's not even Diaz, but more than one fight to get back to a title shot to a guy he's lost twice to. I don't think the the flair is there. I feel like if we're questioning it, I think most other people would too. But, I mean, since it's Silva, you know, they think that, you know, his name is all you need and just put it in a title fight and it jars entry. But, you know, I think – I would want to believe that most smart fight, fight fans would be like, didn't lose to him like a couple times or now? You know, I would think, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, the UFC always claims to know their demographics, so I'll let that be to them. But I would think that, you know, Anderson would need two or three more wins after this one. You know what I mean? So, like, a three tops, I think. But uh, what yeah, I'm saying I'd is – say one more, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, just more than one. You know what I mean? Like, at least more than one. <laughs> um, but my point was that Silva's now in this position now where, I mean, even though he's getting young, uh, he's getting older, he's not. it's not like he's a beat-up dude. It's not like, you know, he's gotten hurt or injured even throughout most, most of his career, like certain fighters. I mean, what he could do is, like, focus on just big money fights now. There's nothing – I've never thought that there was anything wrong with fighters – Going just for the money, fighting just for the money. There are fighters that do that, and you know, uh, it's, it's it's just weird how a lot of people want to say to a fighter if they're not the best in the world that they should stop fighting. And I, I you know, I don't think that there's a reason to stop fighting if you're even even if you know you're not the best in the world anymore. It's smart to say, okay, I'm not the best in the world anymore. I'll just fight these guys. I have a name. I'll make some money. Just 
fighting in the main events. Tito yeah. definitely knows that. Tito's one to yeah. know that for for a fact. Crow Cop is in that same boat. I now with this anna- announcement of Crow Cop, I will say I don't think that he should be saying, "Okay, yeah, I'm gonna fight for the title. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that." That's a little not a little bit of nonsense there. I was thinking more along the lines of like fighters knowing that they can't fight for titles now, that they should just use their name, get 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 big money fights. You know, like if BJ Penn. This is one of my examples. If BJ Penn would have said, okay, look, I'm going to go back up to lightweight and, you know, just fight marquee fights. Like, say, fight Takanori Gomi on a Fox card or or just fight the big names that, you know, are around. Like, fight Nick Diaz. Like, that's a big name fight just to put on, like, the top of a fight night card. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make money. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if Crow Cop would have went to Bellator and fought Slice, that would have been, like, a huge payday for him. I think, you know, Slice, you know, he's 40 and people want to dock him for still fighting. And, but he wants to fight. He wants to fight. And why not use your name? Make your money. There's nothing wrong with that. I, and and as I said before, one of the main reasons why I don't believe a fighter needs to retire just because he's not the best in the world anymore is mainly because I understand how tough retiring from a sport can be. My dad was a professional boxer. And I sit down with him at times and we, and you know, just shoot the shit and we talk about it and we, and I talk about his career and just talk about like what it was like for him retiring. And my dad is one of the toughest ass motherfuckers in the world, you know what I mean? And just to see him talk about retiring is just, it's so hard just for him to talk about, for me to listen to, listening and seeing that. And it's just, I, I understand how hard that can be. And not that it has to be a thing of denial. Although you already have to be a crazy motherfucker as it is to be a fighter, so you know certain bit of sanity is kind of thrown out of the window there already, and yeah. and and for the and so you know keeping a mental block in your head of that is already hard to do. But if some fighters can just say, "Hey, look, I'm just I'm not the best in the world anymore, but I have a name. Fans love watching me do my shit." Vanderlei Silva is another example of a guy who just knew that. You know, he wasn't the best in the world, but fans love watching him. Fans paid to see him. That's why he made good money, you know, and um, and and it's just this thing where you know, oh well, he doesn't need to be paid anymore, or oh, he's not the best in the world, so he shouldn't fight anymore. And I, I always think that I've never said ever, except maybe Chuck Liddell, only because it's seen time, that that I've never said a fighter needs to retire. I've never said that. You'd never go look back. You never see me say that. Only because I, only a fighter should ever know when it's time. No fan, no promoter. I mean, if there's ever one good thing that came out of Dana's mouth, it's that he's never going to be the guy to pressure that until it seems like it, it is deemed necessary. And even he did with the Chuck Liddell thing. He said, yeah, that needs to retire. You know, yeah, he was, you know, he was getting knocked out. It was, it was a matter of consecutively. Yeah. And, and, and of course, Chuck's never going to go anywhere. That's, that's one of those different things is that Chuck just made his career there. Krokop didn't make his career in the UFC, so it doesn't necessarily have to fight there. Uh, but Chuck did, man, and um, and and so I mean I saw the difference there where you know maybe if it's just time for him to retire, he's getting knocked out left and right. It wouldn't be the same watching him if he wasn't in the UFC. Unlike other fighters like Kimbo or Crow Cop or Rampage or Shogun, even if they decided to go fight somewhere else, I think Shogun is another one of these names where he just needs to like you know stick to marquee fights like him, him fighting Rampage that makes money. Rampage fighting Silva, Anderson Silva that makes money. You know, or, you know, if Silva, if Vanderlei Silva ever comes back fighting, you know, big name fights like that, you know what I mean? That yeah. but that makes sense. I don't, you know, I, I know that a lot of people dock the UFC nowadays because of the fact that they don't, that, that a lot of people don't say that, okay, they don't just have the best fighters in the world anymore. They have a lot of the best fighters in the world and like a lot of other ones. You know what I mean? It's become that mainly because of all the shows that they have to put on. So they put, so they've added like, like 200 more people to their roster or some some crazy shit like that but as i've said and the point i was trying to make out to you and and zach was that i just think that you know there's nothing wrong with making your money i mean so what if anybody believes that they've made enough money how do we know that i mean maybe yeah he's made a lot of money but at the same time is it money he can just walk away from the sport and be totally fine for the rest of his life we don't know that only he knows that. And even if he did have that, why not keep making more money? Make more money to give to your kids, to your family, for somebody to leave behind, you know? There's nothing wrong with that, I don't think, in making more money. 
It's like if you become one of the most successful bakers in like the in 2015 till about 2025, and then you stop being the best bakery in, in the world, doesn't mean people don't want to still come and see you and still try and like buy stuff from you, and uh, and, and keep uh, using your business. You know, it's the same thing for a fighter. A fighter is is their own business. Just yeah. because you're not the best in the world doesn't mean people don't want to see you fight. You know what I mean? Um, why not keep making money off of it as long as you can do it whole he wholeheartedly and healthy? If Pro Cop starts coming into the UFC and loses like two knockouts in a row, he should just leave. <laughs> so, I, it won't, you know, it's just because I think they're also, like I said, there was a rule set for this. There, first of all, you need to, um, you need to be able to be healthy. Uh, you need to be able to still have a, 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 a very, uh, a, a, at least a depth skill set to fight. You know what I mean? To fight anybody, not just whoever it is they put you against. Like I think now that Crow Cops in the UFC, he should fight like Andre Arlovsky or I don't maybe maybe Hunt, but I think Hunt is highly ranked, and I don't know how that would go. But uh, or Bigfoot or Frank Mayer, even if say like Frank Mayer wins his next fight against Bigfoot coming up. Or Bigfoot, if Bigfoot wins, you know, I mean, either one of those fights, you know, guys that aren't at the, the top right now, I don't think that he needs to be fighting anybody in, in, in that area, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, I say those names and people are surprised, but I'm thinking like, you know, it, somebody said, I read a comment saying that he uh, isn't like top 20 heavyweight. There are only like 30 heavyweights, so I'm sure he's top 15 <laughs> near it, you know what I mean? At least, I mean, Shab isn't even top 15 anymore which is kind of silly, but, um, not that he should be, but I'm thinking, I'm saying it's kind of silly because that's a guy he lost to yet. I feel like if he fought any other, uh, a few other fighters that are on the top 15, he would be successful in, in some, in, in some way, I think he would do all right. Um, but that, that's just my thing. I just think that fighters need to, you know, leave it to themselves to make decisions, not just based on fan base, because people will come to watch them no matter what. And, and no matter how people complain about, oh, he's made enough money or da, 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 that's not that's not up to us to decide. It's his it's his decision. It's his money. Nobody should decide anybody else's money ever other than the, that one person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. that's my whole thing about it. I, you know. That's why I didn't want to just type all this up for Zach, you know, earlier, <laughs> just to have to explain all that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I get that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, Zach speaking as a fan, not that I like to speak for other people, but Zach is speaking as a fan, and, yeah. you know, he doesn't want to see him embarrass himself out there. You know? he doesn't want oh, to see, see that's where I agree with him. Like, I, I don't think he should have gone to the UFC. I think Bellator was the perfect fit for him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would have found a lot of success there. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I think, think you know, especially like him versus Kimbo. Oh, that would have been crazy. Or even him versus, um, say, like, um, what is it? I'm trying to remember his name right now. Check Congo, a rematch. You know, that would have sold him versus LeVar Johnson. That would have been all right. Him, like, ease him in there with like him versus Beltran or something, you know? That would have been a, you know, people would watch. I'm saying, you know, no matter where he goes, Bellator, UFC, people are going to watch him. I, I figured, why not go where you might be successful? <laughs> it, it benefits you in the long run. Because, I mean, yeah, Zach's right. As a fan, I, me as a fan, I don't, I'm kind of scared for him. Like, he goes to the UFC, what if they give him someone that just wrecks his ass? Like, you just see the name on paper, you're thinking, oh, no. You know what I mean? That's what I'm worried about. The names I listed just earlier, I, I don't think will happen. You know, I don't, or, you know, I mean, they could, but I, I think it's less likely is what I mean. You're still yeah. there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. You don't want to take the opportunity away from him to, you know, at least fight to do his job. Cause that's, that's basically his job. He wants to fight. Yeah. And, you know, as long as the license, as long as the doctor says he can fight, and as long as the commission can go ahead and give him a license, he should have, you know, he should have the right to fight. Exactly. But, so I agree with you there. But, I mean, we don't want to, we also don't want to see the guy, you know, sacrifice his you know, well-being later on. He is up in age, and, you know, older people yeah. don't recover from certain injuries as well as younger men. Yeah, how old is he? He's 40, on the nose. Is he? Yeah. I thought he was like 38. Either way. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and that's not necessarily old. People have fought older. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, he is 40. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, people have fought much older. But, you know, this guy, you know, with the prestige that he's had, you know, mm-hmm. the, the legacy that he's built up as a fighter, you know, just some things you don't want to see a guy like him do. Yeah, exactly. Like, embarrass himself. And that's why, you know, and the, you know how hard it is for people to retire. No, what, what if he goes too long? What happens when he goes too long and he does get hurt badly enough? Or he does, you know, take that one extra headshot that he didn't need to take? Yeah, you know, exactly. That's that's what, I think that's what most fans... Yeah, you don't want him ending up like a Buster Douglas or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, you don't want to be a Buster Douglas, Riddick Bowe, any of that shit, dude. Yeah, that whole, ooh, ugh, yeah, just yeah, listening yeah. to that, you're just, oh, no. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what I'm worried about. I, would, I wouldn't be worried about that as much if he was in Bellator. That's that's the that's the main regret of him going to the UFC. If he's going to make his money, he's going to make his money. And I just hope he does it in a fashion where it doesn't get hurt too much. Yeah. Or if he does, you know. You know, I just hope he, he knows when the time is right to just walk away. I mean, uh, and I hope by then he will have made more money than he would have at Bellator. <laughs> but we'll see. Like I said, I just think it needs to be all about matchups, and I think the UFC should also see that. They, I, I would hope that they signed him going, yeah, he's not fighting for a title, but he's Crow Cop. You know, we could just give him, you know, whoever people will watch him fight. You know, I, I just hope they have that mentality in store. More so, I also ha- hope Crow Cop also has that same mentality so that way he's able to say, yeah, it's a great fight. I'll take that fight. And then, you know, you know I, for lack of a better word, I just hope he's smart enough to say, okay, I'm just going to fight these cans or these, <laughs> or these, uh, or these, you know, I'm going to just play gatekeeper. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of fighters are gatekeepers now. I mean, they don't admit it to themselves. I think he should be one right now in a position where he should just admit it. You know what I mean? Um, and not be going around asking for, yeah, I want Barnett or, or I want, oh, oh, I want Roy Nelson again, or, oh, I want to fight somebody in the top five or something like that, you know, cause then, oh, I'll be scared. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you now that, that's, was my argument. I've kind of repeated it off of the last podcast, but in a different sense, because of it's a different fighter and they're different, uh, you know, scenarios here as far as surrounding Crow Cop. Um, I, I, I hope whoever he fights, that's who I'd like to see him fight. Arlovsky or 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 Mir or um Oh he already fought Mir, huh? That's right. Yeah. I mean I guess he can fight him again. He got knocked out by Mir. <laughs> oh man. Um or I mean, yeah, Arlovsky, Hunt, that rematch would be good because their first fight was really good. Um Bigfoot, I mean, he seems to be on the decline as well, and he's getting old. I think Bigfoot's like thirty six, right? Yeah. Kind of old. Yeah. He's not- as good as he yeah. Uh, so yeah you know and yeah Pro Cop basically just serves for fan service at this point of his career he's not he's not going to be a prize fighter he's not going to be a title guy and mm-hmm. that's okay he's done enough at this stage definitely so yeah, let him go ahead and make his money I'm okay with that but you know let, let's not let's not make it to where he needs to sacrifice his well-being for a few months. Exactly. You know, it's not small money, sure, but yeah. Be real and fun. and and not not to be, you know, rude to Zach or anybody out there. I just think that it should never like fans should never have to question a, a, a fighter's wallet. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that's for us to worry about. Strictly for them, you know. I think it's a silly reason to tell somebody to retire because they've made enough money. No, nobody will ever say, "Yeah, I got enough money." Nobody has ever said that. <laughs> nobody ever wants to walk away with some from something they think that they're good at and say, "Yeah, I got enough money." Nobody will ever say that. You know what I mean? If you're a millionaire and you could continue doing something that could con- that could keep you being a millionaire for a long time, why wouldn't you keep doing it? You know? Yeah. That's my point. To, to Zach, that's the final point. We'll move on from that, but um. We also got a great car coming up this weekend. I'm excited for uh, UFC on Fox 14 going down on Saturday in Sweden. And I seem to be the only one that thinks that, you know, that Anthony Johnson will get the victory this past weekend. Please comment on who you think is going to win that fight. I already asked Chris. 
and he's you know, the only I'm one who agrees torn. with me. I'm still torn, but oh my no, head, my head says Gus. Ah! My head says Gus. <laughs> my heart says you know Rumble has done How dare you? you know, hey man, I'm, I'm just saying. No, you're not. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Don't Gus, say it. That's a better striker. He is. That's a better striker. Wow, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You you feel like his footwork's better than Gus's, and it's it, not even it just his footwork. <laughs> you know, it it may be, but you know, look at what Gus was able to do to Jones with a reach disadvantage. What hope in hell does AJ have to guy that well, he did to Jones? Here, here's my debate against the Jones. Uh, striking debacle that has been presented to me numerous times is that yeah i mean he was able to do that to jones but jones was purposely trying to fight him on the outside you think johnson's gonna purposely stick himself on the outside where he has the reach disadvantage i don't think so i think and and the thing also too is gus kind of came forward a lot more which is good on gus's part he needed to be able to he needed to do that if he was going backwards the whole time he his ass would have been in trouble and the thing about it though is like gus is gonna want to try and be on the outside Similar to how Jones wanted to be on the outside with Gus. So there are going to be times where Gus has to backtrack. And there are going to be times where Johnson comes on the inside and gets on the inside. He can't keep guys on the outside as good as John Jones can. That's, That's the difference. True. You know, uh, people have gotten inside on Gus before. Jimmy kind of did. And he didn't land anything significant. But I think, you know, give Johnson that same opportunity. He will land something significant. I think he will get on the inside, clinch, box. Johnson knows how to strike on the inside. He's shown it numerous times. He knows how to counter strike from the inside in close range like that. Um, you know, he, his footwork, when I say it's better than his, it's it's the fact that he can move a little faster. And it's also that, you know, he's, he's good at, you know, uh, what is it, switching levels, you know, take, going for takedowns and such. And, and uh, he's the stronger guy. I think if he fights for it, he could get it, you know, because as opposed to Jones, Jones, he's great at taking guys down. But what Gus was able to do so well was that he was able to react and sprawl and he could match Jones for strength. And um, I think there will be times where Johnson goes for takedowns. He won't always get them. But at the same time, Johnson, Johnson will be the stronger guy. I think he'll be able to muscle his way into some takedowns. That's the difference. Also being that I think Johnson has faster hands than Jones. He, he's not as technical as Gus or Jones, I don't think, in the sense because of the fact that he's he's a wild striker, meaning that he doesn't always tactfully aim his punches. He just kind of swings sometimes, you know what I mean? But at the same time, he's also measured in the sense that he takes his time to attack before throwing the combinations as well. He's gotten better about that. You could see that in his days in the World Series of Fighting before he even came back to the UFC. Um with Gus, I just feel like you know he's gonna he's gonna want to try and fight on the outside. I'm sure he's gonna have some counter punching ready, so he's gonna hit Anthony a few times. I bet. Um, I think though that Johnson will also hit him, and I think the first person to go down will be Gus, mainly because I don't think he can eat as the kind of punches that Johnson's gonna uh, throw. And if he lands just even a decent one from Johnson, you know uh, he's gonna go down. And so I think with that, I think even with the tough chin, I know that Gus's chin was also brought in as an argument for the um, the Jones fight. Like he took a, a lot of punishment in the later rounds uh, of the Jones fight, mainly because they were both, you know, especially he was getting outstruck because he got tired. And this is a five round fight, but I would say that Johnson's cardio is the same. So I can't I can't imagine that the same thing will happen here. You know, it really will come down to we will see who's got the better gas tank if it goes into the later rounds. If Johnson doesn't finish soon, I think if Johnson does finish soon, um, you know, uh, obviously, well, obviously will be finished. But I mean, like if he's more aggressive early on and, and doesn't reserve his gas tank going into the later rounds, he might get himself in trouble. You know what I mean? So he's definitely got to keep that same kind of knowledge that he's gained and being measured and and. And, and somewhat tactful by being able not to by, – by not allowing himself to get too tired. So that's the thing is that I just think Johnson will come forward. He'll be more aggressive. His shots um, – he won't have to land as much to hurt uh, Gus. Gus uh, can, can knock dudes out though, definitely. So Johnson does need to be prepared for that. He needs to also be prepared to uh, be on the, on the inside. Gus, I mean, he needs to be prepared for Johnson coming in on the inside. And when Johnson comes in, man, I think he'll land some good ones. Plus, Johnson can fight on the outside. I just don't recommend that he does that in this fight. If, like, you know, he can land body kicks and head kicks. 
He's done that before. Um, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's just definitely not what he should do <laughs> going into this fight with a guy as reachful as Gus. And Gus only really has a three inch reach advantage. It's not too crazy of a, of right. a reach advantage. He does have a height advantage, so it kind of adds to his reach advantage in, in this in in a in a in a weird way. But like I said, I I don't think Gus is as good as Jones as keeping dudes on the outside, and that's what Gus didn't need to have to worry about in the Jones fight. That's the difference. Um, <clears throat> which which is why I feel like in the striking department, um, Johnson will do all right. Now, if we we're talking about the grappling department, it's a different story. I think it could go either way, only because. You know, Gus seems to have really um, worked on his ground game. I think Johnson's a more effective grappler in the sense that he can, you know, transition better, or that he can muscle his way into an, into into better positioning. Um, and he's got probably some decent ground and pound. We've never really seen it, but I'm sure getting hit with that guy on top of you isn't isn't fun. But um, you know, Gus uh, is another guy who. Doesn't have the best ground and pound, but it's there definitely. So if Gus tried to get Johnson to the ground, I'm sure that it it, it could happen at the same time. So I think both both men need to be defensively sound in the wrestling department, not getting taken down and all that. But I think if it does go to the ground, if Johnson can get him down, I think he's effective at being able to keep him down there and maybe score a round or two that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, so with that being said, my pick is still Anthony Johnson. I think that um, the stand-up is where it's it's going to be most important because I don't think Johnson will be too worried about it being uh, on the ground, and I think he's confident enough in his in his in his striking that he can get the job done. Uh, but that's how that's how I feel, and that's where I think should go down. And as far as everybody that thinks that I'm wrong, we shall see. And the podcast following that show, if Johnson wins. You're not going to want to listen to it. It's just going to be me being a little, you know, being a little Nancy about how he won. And I'm just going to be bragging and all this other shit because so many people have told me that he's not going to win. Literally, the only person that thinks Johnson is going to win next to me is Chris, Mr. Katana. The, the, he's the only other guy who thinks Johnson will win. So <laughs> other than that, everybody has switched on me thinking that Johnson can't beat Gus uh, or get a title shot. So we'll see what happens. But that's just me. Um, let's look at the the rest of this card. I mean, uh, any last comments on that fight before we look at the rest of this card? Uh, you know, not really, man. <laughs> I haven't swayed you in any way. Fuck. All right, whatever. No, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's gonna happen, and I still don't think it matters who wins. I think it does. I think it does. I think it matters if I think it matters if Johnson wins. I don't think either one of them. I don't think either one of them uh, benefits from winning because they'll have to fight John Jones. Benefits from winning. Either one of them will be able to take advantage of the opportunity. John Jones is a whole different animal. Gus gave him gave John Jones the best fight of John Jones's career, hands down, and even that wasn't enough. Stop the guy. And Anthony Johnson definitely won't be able to beat John Jones. Oh, you see a guy, you seen a guy that could wrestle and what he could what he was able to do to John Jones. Yeah, I don't think it's about I, I think the danger that Johnson presents is much different than any other fighter uh that's ever been put in front of Jones though. And reason being is like let's look let's backtrack his whole title reign. Once first there was Shogun, a really dangerous striker, but he he was put off completely by the clinch game of, of Jones, who kind of, you know, he uses his striking to really, in the first round, I remember, he used his long-range striking to, to really tire him out in the first round and really get him guessing. Then he utilized some good wrestling and, and a good clinch game for the rest of the fight until he ended in third. Who did he fight after that? He fought, who did he defend his title against first? I believe it was Rampage? Or am I wrong? Uh, yes. I think it was Rampage. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was Rampage. Uh, and so, okay, so of course, Rampage is one of these power strikers. Nowhere near as fast as Johnson, but he's got the power to definitely bring it. Um, you know, not, not any wrestling game whatsoever. Just full-on knockout power, a really good striker. You know, and he tore him up by, you know, just 
beating up his legs with leg kicks and and uh, you know beating him on the outside completely until he was able to get him to the ground uh, in the fourth round finished him and that's a guy without any decent grappling defense you know what I mean um, yeah. so we'll move on and then we got Lyoto Machida Lyoto Machida was a very intriguing challenge for Jones I felt I think you know he landed on Jones and while Machida has knockout power it's not you know uh, he landed one good shot. You gotta land, you know. You got you gotta land more. I think you know. It really comes down. He didn't land the kind of shot like he landed on Bader, for example. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, sure enough, Jones only needed to land one that threw Machida off balance, and he was able to take advantage and sink him with a choke. So, but look at Lyoto. Lyoto definitely presented the most challenging, uh, striking fight that Jones has ever had. And that's because he's a striker, you know what I mean? And he landed on Jones. So moving on, you have Rashad. Now Rashad's kind of mixed well all around, but he didn't utilize his wrestling at all. And not even because Jones could defend it well against it. He just didn't use it. It was so awkward, that fight for me. Um, I was, like, really upset about it. I think that was really more of what Jones was doing. Well, yeah, I mean, he was beating him up standing. That was a definite, but you would think that Rashad would go, okay, time to go downstairs and try and take him down. He didn't even – he did that once. That was it. And it was a shitty shot. Wait. What's up? It didn't work, and he quit on it. That's what happened. Yeah, that one takedown, that's some silly shit, though. You know, Daniel Cormier at least tried multiple times to take him down. Yeah. That's the difference. Um, Moving on, who was after Rashad? Oh, Vitor. Not, okay, but that's Vitor. Pre, pro, pre, uh, like pre-TRT too, I think. I don't even know. Um, so then moving on from that. And he almost got armbarred by Vitor, but that, you know. Yeah. I, I will say he showed some good tenacity in being able to fight off that armbar. Other than that, the, the fight was all his. <clears throat> then uh, after Vitor, who do you have? Oh, Chael. <laughs> Despite was, yeah. the, the size difference aside, yeah. you know. Yeah, that was- gimme fight of his career that was the what that was definitely the gimme fight of his career <laughs> yeah there's chill and then who did he fight before daniel oh gus so then there's the gus fight the uh the gus fight he gets challenged by one of the best of today's talent and then um you know he he, he and, and he has the height the reach to boot lands some good shots on him but he's able to out cardio the guy now, Gustafson, as I've said, is to me not on Johnson's level striking. I think that um, as well as if you go to like go to Daniel Cormier, I don't think Daniel is on Anthony level uh, uh, level of striking. That's the biggest difference is that I think Johnson. For me, if Johnson can't defend the takedowns, he's he's screwed. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, then, you know, because I'm sure Jones will try and take him down. But I think standing up as Johnson presents a bigger challenge than any fighter that has ever – oh, we skipped Glover to Shara, but no. You know, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Glover was like – basically he was a rampage with a, like a better ground game. and But even more so, I didn't even think he deserved that fight. Um, skipping that aside uh, – yeah, the, I think Johnson presents a, 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 a much different striking uh, uh, challenge than any fighter put in front of him that sh- uh, other than maybe Machida. And I'm telling you what, if, say Johnson can land a few shots like Machida got to do, uh, I, f- I feel John- Jones is in trouble. <laughs> now, if, can he do it? I believe he could, but at the same time, it also probably couldn't. There's like a 50-50 on that for me. Um, based on his improvements as a striker, even though before he was already a decent striker, and I'm talking about Johnson. Um, yeah. And as I said, I believe Johnson is a better striker than than um, than uh, than Gustafson. The thing is, yeah, that reach. But I feel like uh, Johnson is is smart enough to be able to incorporate wrestling with his striking, in the sense that he could clinch up, exit, dirty box, keep him against the cage. Utilize striking from there because even if he's blocking, eating a punch from Johnson must hurt like a bitch. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't imagine that's something fun. And that's just the way I look at that fight. I'm sure people agree or disagree all over, all around. But uh, that's just how I, I see that fight going. I see it as a presentable challenge for Jones uh, as far as with, with Johnson. Gustafson, unless he brings something new to the table as well as his already um, decent game plan that he had in the first fight – uh, I don't see him beating Jones. 
Um, but that's just how I see that fight. With that being said, I feel like I should just move on because I'm just preaching to to, to nobody. <laughs> I seem to be the only one that believes this, but this is just my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll you move know. on. Oh, wait, what? No, nothing. Go ahead, dude. Yeah, we'll move on. Uh, the rest of this card. Now, this card's in Sweden, mind you, so there's going to be a lot of European fighters. Like, you got Victor Pesta. He's the only one that I seem to Oh, as well as Stanislav Netkov um, and Nikita Krylov. Those are the only three... Uh, that I know of, other than Akira Korsani, but he's on the main card, and I'm talking about like the the uh, the uh, the prelims here, and there are a lot of them. There's gonna be six going into the Fox card, and then two on the Fight Pass. So there's eight prelim fights. That's a lot. Uh, you have Akira Korsani versus Sam Cecilia, which will headline him, I believe. Neil Siri, Chris Beal, Chris Beal, the dude that you know. Uh, you remember the flying knee of last year? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's gonna be on the card. Uh, what what throws me off about this is that he's you know at the bottom of the card. It's kind of throwing me off. Especially because that flying knee knockout that was at the bottom of the card, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. You have Nico Masuko, the guy who submitted uh, Alessio Sakura versus uh, Albert Tumanov. Kenny Robertson, the guy who got away with the famous knee bar of last year. Uh, dubbed the banana split. I don't know if you remember that one. No, I don't remember that one. Yeah, I'll send you a video that you probably remember it because it was one of the weirdest ones you saw. Uh, he's fighting a guy named Sultan Aliv. <laughs> his 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 first name is a like a is like a type of you know <laughs> official name, and then his last name is Medicine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. Last time we made fun of a guy whose name was after a product, he decided to knock out Eve's Edwards, though. So, I, or no, to submit him. So, <laughs> last time we did that, the dude shocked us all. <laughs> Nikita Krylov versus Stanislav Netkov. That's a decent fight. I don't know if you remember Stanislav Netkov, do you? Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. and Nikita Krylov, uh, def- another Russian guy who's on the on the on the rise right now. Um, was that a was that called the guy that uh, caused Luis Kane to run away and try to hop the cage? Nikita Kryla? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, Ned Cobb. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Oh, that so funny. <laughs> cage escape in UFC. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that was funny man just remembering how he bounces off the cage and yeah <laughs> yeah Nikita Krylov is is another Russian guy that or well not he Stanislav is I believe Bulgarian or something like that yeah yeah um uh he's Russian but I mean he's had he's mixed success he fought at heavyweight coming into the UFC and is now light heavyweight that's what this is a light heavyweight bout so um should be interesting. He's fought in guys like Sol Paleli. Recently beat Cody Donovan. Before that, he lost to uh, who did he lose to? He beat somebody. I'm trying to remember. I'm just going off memory here. Let me look him up though. Oh, he lost to Ovin Saint Pru. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Von Funcho. Oh yeah, that was him. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Von right. Funcho. Yeah, Andy Ogle's fighting. I don't know if anybody else does, but I think Andy Ogle is a sweetheart, and I hope he does good. Um. Fighting a guy named Makwan Amir Amirkari, <laughs> Amir Khan, I don't know how to say this. Amir Khani. Let me hope I said that right. Because <laughs> if I didn't, I'd be scared. Oh, there's a guy named Constantine Rockin <laughs> on this car. Man, I'm probably fucking these up so bad right now. <laughs> Guarantee you. Yeah. Okay. So apparently. <laughs> And then, um, and then going into the main card, you will have Nico Masuko fighting uh, Albert Timonov. I don't know who those guys are, so props to Albert for getting a, a, a prime time spotlight in the Fox card, though, right? You know. Uh, and then you got a decent matchup in Phil Davis versus Ryan Bader. That's an interesting matchup. What are your opinions on that one? I, uh, you know, it'd be good to see. It's gonna be good to see uh, Phil Davis and Ryan Bader go at it. Both these guys are game opponents. Uh, Phil got embarrassed by Rumble Johnson, but that doesn't mean he's a bad fighter at all. Uh, Rumble Johnson's just that good. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bader, he's 
he's on a tear. He kind of stopped the OSP hype train. And, uh, you know, I'm interested to see how, where he takes that going forward. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I'm going well, to pick Bader. I'm going to pick Bader. Bader. Mr. Bader. That's that's an interesting fight for me. Um, for me, it's just wow. I mean, both guys have deep, very good wrestling backgrounds, grap, uh, grappling game, you know, and uh, both guys are coming on, kind of coming off the same type of performance. Phil Davis was, was more entertaining to watch, uh, and I mean his victory over Glover Teixeira at 179, and yeah. then Bader, yeah, in his last fight defeated uh, Oven Saint Pru. Um. Both guys just yeah a, a ton of wrestling uh like it's, it's, they're that's basically their bread and butter right so then it kind of comes down to if one can't get the wrestling advantage to the over over the other and that's kind of the dilemma I have is I can't think of one of these guys having better wrestler than the other if I had to think of who has the better wrestling though I kind of sway more towards Phil Davis. You know, um, I feel like he's got better wrestling. Now, if, say, they were to match up an offset off, uh, you know, kind of, you know, even out. What's the word? There's, like, a word for that. But Yeah, know. if they cancel each other. They yeah, if they cancel each other out in the, in, 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 the, um, in the wrestling department, in the grappling ov- overall, then it becomes who's the better striker. Now, I, Bader has always had knockout power, decent hands, but for some reason, I honestly believe Bader's striking has degressed. I feel like he doesn't have as much confidence in his hands as he used to, you know. And that's weird because, according to him, and you know, sources close to him, he's hired boxing coaches to to help him with his striking, and and I just have not seen any improvements anywhere. And I and I'm a boxing, you know. Uh, I teach boxing, so I mean, I, I I'm a boxing coach, and I don't even see that you know, from him. At least I, you know, and and you would think I'd be able to pick up on any nicks or knacks that maybe he picked up in boxing, but I haven't. Not in the Ovens fight, not even in the Paros fight. You know, um, I just haven't seen the improvements like necessary for him for him to really have a decent striking game. And I feel like it's gotten worse, which is weird. Now Phil Davis has actually seemed to to have a, a a better striking game coming forward. I feel like, you know, uh, the Vinny Magalhaes fight showed some, some good things and bad things about his striking. The bad things were that he never used any strike, maybe more than 70%. And I mean, that's kind of like called like volume striking, but at the same yeah. time, he wasn't doing volume striking. He was doing volume striking without at much volume. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and he threw some decent strikes. I mean, he he mixes it up, throwing kicks high and low, and and and, uh, and even incorporates it into his wrestling well because it sets up wrestling every now and again. Um, right. So I, I feel like you know his striking is, is more is going to be more savvy to to watch than Vader's. You know, more or less just adamant. Of, he just uses his hands. He just boxes. You know what I mean? Uh, he doesn't mix it up too much with his kicks, or, or you know, he doesn't throw crazy wild head kicks or even body kicks for that for that matter. Um, so I feel like Phil Davis is more diverse in the striking, and I think that will be en- if if Bader can't land on Phil, then um, then I feel like uh, Phil will be able to net n- nag a you know a dis- nag a decision here. I think he'll be able to take it to the three rounds. He'll look flashy enough. And I think he'll even be more offensive in the grappling enough to get the judge's decision here. So that's kind of my prediction. Is Phil Davis three three judges in? You know what I mean? Unanimous. I feel like he just owns, uh, not owns, but like you know, completely controls the the tempo the tempo of the fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my yeah. prediction. Yeah, Davis is an incredible athlete, but so is Bader. You know, a lot of people want to sleep on Bader's ability to you know hang in there and go to the deep rounds and. Uh, have his way with his opponent. He can do all those things. For so, sure. Really Bader is probably the stronger guy here too. So I mean, yeah. he's got to be real. He's got to be aggressive. I think if if you want to give Bader like a a, a a list of things he needs to do, he needs to be aggressive. He needs to push the pace. He needs to try and out muscle Davis. You know, kind of fight him to where he realizes he needs to use technique over strength. Um, because Phil will need to realize at some point he's not the stronger man in there. And um, and, and, and if, if Bader can make him do that, he'll have to make him pull on – he'll have to make him rely on technique on the ground. And that tends to drag on for a fighter if their technique isn't already the best. You know what I mean? And Phil Davis, for lack of a better word, doesn't have excellent technique on the ground as far as like um, 
as far as like defending against punches or submissions, mainly because you never you, you see that in the Rashad fight. He wasn't, you know, it, when it came to Rashad's grappling and transitioning and positioning and all that, he he had no answer. And I'm not saying that Bader is like a Rashad on the ground, and you know, so but at the same time, I, I'm just kind of going off that. So maybe he could fight fight him off on the ground. That's just my observation um, of of that specifically. But yeah, if Bader needs to know what he needs to do. He needs to be aggressive and, and kind of push the pace the full way through. But I feel Phil Davis has a, a better gas tank. What do you think? I think Phil Davis is the better athlete, honestly. But mm -hmm. it's really going to come down to who's the better fighter. And, I mean... Phil Davis, they both have really impressive streaks coming into the, you know, the UFC. Uh, and they've only lost to, you know, Phil Davis only lost twice, if I'm not mistaken. I believe and, so. Rashad uh, and Johnson? No? John, Johnson, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Bader has lost. To quite a few dudes at this point. Four now? I believe so. Yeah, because he first lost to Jones. Let's look it up. See who he's lost to. I know he's lost to Jones. Yeah, that's who he first lost to. Yeah, Jones was his first loss. I know he's lost to Leoto. He got knocked the fuck out by that dude. Yeah. Oh, he lost to Tito. He lost to Shara. He lost to Glover. He lost to Tito. <laughs> oh, he did lose to Tito, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he got guillotined. So those are his four losses. Yeah, Glover, Leoto, Tito, and Jones. Now I can admit three of those are are you know how, you know it's not that bad. But Tito, what happened there? <laughs> Tito pulled off. Was pulled that up. the? When was that? That was. Uh, that was at UFC 132. I remember it because I'm a, I'm a big Tito fan, t t admittedly. Um, and so I remember watching that and going, dude, what the? F Even I didn't think he was gonna win, but I was sitting there going, whoa, you know. It was at 132. It was the pay-per-view that had Dominic Cruz in favor. I remember that one. Oh. Yeah, see, I, it just, yeah, I mean, I think it'll come down to who's the better fighter in the sense of who wants it more. If Bader fights for it, man, he's got it, I think. If Phil Davis wants it more, he doesn't even need to, to use as much. I think if Bader wants it more, he needs to use everything he's got. That's the difference, I think. If if you get what I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, because I think Phil Davis is more equipped to win this fight than Bader is, in my opinion. Bader can still win it though, definitely. Uh, yeah, moving on. That's a call, so. Yeah, it is. I mean, because they're both great fighters, definitely. I mean, they're at, they've they've stayed at the top of the ten of the light heavyweight division for. Um, for almost as long as they've been around since their name has been, you know, um, known. So uh, it, it, that's what makes it a decent fight because both of these guys, you know, have been like from number five to number 10 for the majority of their time ranked in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it should be interesting. With that, we'll move on to the co-main event. I got Dan Henderson versus uh, Gegard Mousasi. Now this is interesting because now Dan Henderson is dropping back down to 185. Whoa, it's kind of crazy. Um, but what, how do you expect that uh, old Hendo will do? I think Hendo can still win it. Uh, Gegard hasn't looked very motivated in the last his last few outings. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of hard to watch him fight sometimes. He he looked completely uninspired against uh, Jacare. Yeah, but he just always looks like that. And he really does. He always looks like that. He always looks like he could not give a fuck. <laughs> you can't go off of how he looks physically. When he fights, it's kind of a different story. Like the Lyoto fight, uh, it, it kind of took him a minute to really pick up any pacing in that fight um, or, or even a care in the world. The Mark Munoz fight was, without a doubt, his best uh, performance in the octagon thus far. Um yeah, the Jacare fight wasn't a good fight for him at all. Um, it was weird. I mean, because, yeah, while I admit, yeah, he always looks like that, he, uh, at the only time he looked, you know, until he was in trouble, did he really look like, oh, shit, okay, I'm in trouble. I need to take charge. I need to try and do something. That was, like, around the second round, like, around the half, like halfway point of it, if I remember correctly. And then in the third round, Jacare just turned it up. You know what I mean? And he didn't follow suit. That's how I felt. And... Yeah, that's that's weird about him. Um, 
And when you got a guy like Hendo who's trying to knock your head off at all point at all seconds of the fight, he's got to be careful. With me, I think Gegard, man, if he can get it to the ground, he's got a good chance. Because one yeah. thing that people don't know about Gegard is his his grappling is fantastic. And I know for anybody that that didn't really watch him a lot until he was in the UFC, they think, oh, he's a striker or something. No, he's before coming in the UFC, he was a really really bona fide grappler. Like, he was submitting dudes left and right. Like, let's look at his record. I know he's got some big names on his record he's submitted before. I'm sure of it. Let's look it up. Uh, but what's, like, your official pick in that fight? Uh, Gegard. Gegard. Gegard yeah, does what he was supposed to do. He's going to win it. Yeah. Let's look. All right, so. He's 2-2 two and two in the UFC thus far. And... And he's submitted guys like oh he's also got quite a few KOs as well. He submitted, you know um, well I'm looking at a lot of strikers. Oh, Vangelista Santos, um uh, Hector Lombard even. That's kinda crazy. Wow. Back all the way in two thousand six. Can you believe that? Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm looking at a lot of pride names, a lot of strikers like Melvin Manhoff, Mark Hunt. He submitted them. Casey Scola, uh, Dennis Kang, even and Dennis Kang is actually a, is a really good uh, grappler. He actually beat Souza Dream with an up kick. Everybody knows that. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, around 2009, 2010, he really started upgrading his striking and got a lot of knockouts there. Knocked out guys like Gary Goodridge and Renato Babalusa Brawl even. Uh, of course, Souza has mentioned uh, Jake O'Brien as well. He drew with Keith Jardine, but that was kind of a you know he lost a point, I believe. Might be wrong. Yeah, he was deducted a point for an illegal up kick. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean his overall game is really tight knit, definitely, and his record is pretty good too. He's like thirty four and four, right? Thirty five and four. Yeah, or he's oh, 35 thirty five and five following this latest loss. But I mean, all the names he's lost to are big names, man. And like Leoto and Jacare, those are two of the top five best like middleweights in the world. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I believe Musasi has the better overall skill set to win this fight, definitely, because Hendo is really straight away. He's become rampage. He's really straight away from any decent grappling or effective grappling, rather. Um. And just kind of relies on that H bomb now too much, I think. And you know, even though it's a new division, I hope Hendo wins. I'm a Hendo fan. I would like to see him win. Uh, but I think Gegard, you know, will be ready. I think he'll he'll look to you know take advantage of his of his uh, kind of heavy striking in the sense that he you know puts a lot into it, and that leaves you susceptible to to um, counter striking and grappling. You know, so I think that uh, Gegard will be able to take advantage of that and probably put him on his ass. That's yeah, I think so. I think I think Gegard has all the tools he needs. Uh, Endo, you know, he's still a great fighter. Don't get me wrong. Oh, definitely. But he, he's still a great fighter, but he's also starting to get, you know, knocked out. And that's just a trend that I've noticed. Once you start to get knocked out, it's hard to stop getting knocked out. Yeah, he got knocked out by Vitor. Who else knocked him out? Yeah, Vitor knocked him out. Uh, I think that was it. He got submitted by Cormier. Cormier yeah, he okay, was getting was, manhandled, yeah. though, man. That just shows you how good yeah, Cormier he is. Yeah, he was just getting tossed up. There's there's no way that uh, Masasu would be able to pull that off on uh, Hendo. Yeah, I mean, Hendo's always had a decent chin, but who knows if it ever yeah. kind of subsides on him. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about this. Uh, now that we're done with this card, it's a great card. Going down this weekend, Saturday, January 24th on Fox. People listen to it. It will be – or watch it. It will be a great fight, I believe. And, that I, I, man, that main event, ooh. You and me are going to watch it together, and you're just going to see me get all jittery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking like a weirdo. I can't wait for that fight. I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Um, but, yeah, watch it. UFC on Fox 14. Going on on Fox, well, the prelims, just so in case I need to give the times out for anybody that would like to know, the prelims start at 3, and they're 3 hours, so they're going to be, so the main card doesn't start until 6, um, so just for anybody that needs to know, and that's Pacific time, um, Eastern time, it would be 6, the prelims start at 6, and then uh, the Fox card starts at 9, for everybody that needs to know. Um, I, 
Yeah, man. Again, I'm excited for this card. I wanted to talk to you about a few things before we close on out here. Um, okay. Just because, you know, I, I'm looking for anybody to debate back and forth with this subject. Not just about the Connor thing, but any, but just, like, you know, big names in general. Like, uh, that don't have quite the name. Like, TJ Dillashaw. A guy like that. Like, what's your opinion on him? I think T, I think TJ Dillashaw shocked the world. Yeah. And uh, more power to him. I think he's the guy that holds that belt for a little bit. I don't think Burrell gets him in a rematch. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Uh, TJ Dillashaw, I don't think that was a flash in the pan performance. You got to look at the quality of the win. This guy whooped the bull crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely had his way with him for over you know 23 minutes or so and then got the finish anyway knowing he was ahead on the cards yeah. knowing he hadn't lost around yet and he was still going for the finish and he got it uh burrell was just not prepared or just wasn't good enough to do anything to him so uh, and this is a guy that has gone you know 30 or so fights without losing uh -huh. you know what i'm saying so those the thing i like about those the records don't scare this kid and also, uh, related to Dillashaw, um, it recently came out that, or Dana's trying to insinuate that Dillashaw and uh, Faber are willing to fight each other for a title. <laughs> Faber would get mopped. I think Faber you know? would get molly -whopped. I think that's what would happen. Faber would get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> he, there's no way his striking has ever looked anything on that level. No, First of all, no, it can't no. even get to Burrell's level, much less that level. I yeah. mean, T Dillashaw's level was a, like levels above Burrell, much less or above Favors, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, it was it was definitely enough to uh, dominate Burrell. Now Burrell mm -hmm. doesn't have bad footwork, doesn't have bad striking or any of that. But gosh, Dillashaw just put on a clinic. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was a great. It it was it was like the it was like the combat equivalent of sedu of seduction because I was watching that going dude you <laughs> know like whoa <laughs> like, like I was falling in love like whoa <laughs> I was a TJ fan going into that fight already but as everybody knows I was not expecting him to win that fight I just wasn't yeah. and yeah. and he comes out and just shuts up all the haters. You know, even, even, um, you know, what's the word? Like, uh, like when you instill hope in somebody, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I don't know, just like yeah. he, he did that for me. I mean, just showing me like, man, I will never doubt your ass again. Like, you know, like that, that kind of performance where you're watching somebody do something that you didn't think they could ever pull off ever. And then you're like, okay, this guy is impossible or is, is capable of impossible feats. And I'm never going to talk badly about him again, ever. <laughs> you know, and it was kind of like that moment. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I just I see a lot of people now more like more hating on him these days, and I just don't get why it is. Like, uh, like uh, you know, the guy doesn't talk shit. He doesn't, you know. I mean, I think he says some silly shit sometimes. He doesn't talk shit. Like one time he said he would like to fight Jose Aldo. Now I don't know how he'd do against Jose Aldo. I can't doubt it. I'm I'm a fan of his. And what did I just say? I'm never gonna doubt him uh, in in a, in a high stakes situation where he maybe you think he can't pull it off. I wouldn't say that, but I think it's kind of crazy to be calling out the featherweight champ. You know, right now when you're the bantamweight champ, you still got a lot to prove. Still, in the sense that you know he he's gotta he's gotta fight this guy again. Let's see how he does, and then you know let's see how he also does against the rest of the competition. He needs to go on and fight a heel dub Dominic Cruz if that ever happens. That does, man. That's a fucking shame, man. Dominic Cruz. How does that happen? Yeah. That's just, that's like, happens. like, that's man. Like, I swear, like, he, he cheated on some bimbo, and she went to a witch doctor and made a doll of him, and she yeah, just, can, you know, at periodically pins a needle on his thigh and dick and just, you know... He, he can't get anything going, man. It's yeah. so bad. That's just what it seems like to me. Because, I, I mean, know. how could you have that bad of luck, you know? Yeah, those are just, like, some of the worst legs in MMA right now. And he's a great fighter. Oh, definitely, man. That That's Takei crazy. Mizugaki thing. I mean, unless it becomes another three years, are you going to be like, dude, what the fuck, man? Yeah. I doubt it. I mean, I, if, 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 if he heals up that ACL again. Both of them, anyway. 
and one of them breaks again, I how do you not want to just kill yourself? You know, <laughs> it's just like how, I mean, your luck could not be that bad. I don't think anybody's luck should be that bad. I mean, that's the equivalent of just you know, man, just like having sex with like your your like like the the love of your life celebrity crush kind of deal and a meteor hits you and it's <laughs> I can't imagine how how crazy bad your luck can be man actually if it happens again because of the fact that he's been injured as much as he already has if it happened again it would be like you're about to insert your dick in her and then it, and then it happens like before you even get the chance to feel the pleasure, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it comes in and smashes her on the head. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's that's it's just not his feet. It's crazy. I man, just when I heard it, I couldn't yeah. believe it. And bad too, because especially because yeah. if you listen to the 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 awards podcast that we did, I I kind of jinxed it. <laughs> I was like. I was saying some shit. I was like, John Jones, Daniel Cormier, stay healthy. Dillashaw, too. Cruz, too. I definitely want to see that fight. And Chris was like, dude, stop talking. Stop. Just stop. And I was like, yeah, but I'm just saying, dude, it would be a wreck if he injured that leg again. He was like, dude, stop talking. Stop. <laughs> and I'm just like, what did I just do? Like an hour later. <laughs> and then when it came out, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, I was just asking about him, TJ specifically, only because you know people are hating. I see a lot more hate about him more so recently than I have ever before. And I've been a big fan of his even before he became the champ. Uh, and, and you see, you saw the improvement last year when he fought Mike Easton at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you remember that fight, but I remember thinking like, man, that was one of his best performances right there. And then he like times tend it to, in that Barrow yeah. fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, first of all, his head, he was dodging everything, moving out of the way, head movement looking perfect, and and he, and he was landing jabs and combinations, and you never kind of stuck to one dip, one typical type of strike. You just kept mixing it up, you know? And, and then, you know, just threatening with grappling when he needed to, and while Barrow was good at defending it, he had to keep it in his mind, like, okay, this guy could shoot on me any minute now, and, oh, man, just pure yeah, excellence. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the best fights or best performances I've ever seen out of a feather or a bantamweight. Yeah, oh, definitely. That's probably one of the best performances from a bantamweight you've ever seen, other than when maybe Burrell fought uh, at Pickett. Pick. Yeah, I think I think uh, other than like in a full fight, like a fight that maybe lasted more than five minutes, say. Uh, yeah. That was one of the best performances you ever saw from a bantamweight because, like, from Burrell, one of the best run rounder performances I've ever seen was uh Burrell when he fought Brad Pickett and yeah. and and another one that kind of tops it or not tops it but like is right there next to it is the Dominic Cruz Mizugaki fight because holy shit you know nobody saw that coming and then he comes out of this long retirement does that you know so it's up yeah. there for me yeah. at bantamweight man going into this year was an exciting time because you had Cruz and Faber and Burrell and and Dillashaw all rolled into one and a, and a Sun Sao did I say him yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, it, it just seemed like the division was getting hyped, and then sure enough, two of the guys, Asensio and 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 uh, and Cruz, you know, go ahead and break their feet. It's kind of crazy. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's man, it kind of just that that whole hype thing just for for everything kind of died down, and it's been crazy too because the injury bug has already gotten to work this year, man. It's already ruined two main events and stuff. Yep. Yeah, I was bummed out about that, man. Um, All right, let me ask you this then. Man. Go ahead, man. Think about uh, Yo Romero. What about him? How you feel about him as a middleweight? Oh, Where's I think he's middle? badass. I think he's awesome. I became a big fan of him after the Derek Brunson fight. I like that yeah. comeback because he was down two rounds going into that third round. Um, yeah. And and do, and I was like, whoa, you know, because uh, he um, you know, I, he he was legit getting out wrestled. Not out wrestled, I guess. Not out wrestled, but I mean, Brunson was matching him, and this is a guy that's supposed to be a silver medal uh, Olympic athlete. You know what I mean? And and I'm thinking like, well, this is kind of crazy because you know, for a guy with those kind of credentials, this guy beat Kale Sanderson, and I don't know if anybody knows who that is, but he's like the Muhammad Ali of wrestling, essentially, and he beat him three times. That's no fucking joke, man. And 
for me, I'm thinking like, and, and I follow wrestling a lot, so that's how I know that. You know, just I, I'm not I'm not just like sounding like some jump on board fan of wrestling. I've always been, but I, I think Yoel uh, has the, the 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 capabilities of being one of the best fighters. I think he got in the game really late because he's what 36 already. 37. 37. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, when you're an Olympic athlete, age kind of you know doesn't doesn't apply to you until much later. I feel. You know, yeah. So. Not as much. Nah, not as much. I feel because he's kept in shape all his life. I'm sure if he if he stayed away from any kind of performance enhancing drugs, it's not gonna have an effect on him. And yeah. until he tests for something, or, or you know, you ever see something bad happen to him, uh, or anything, you kind of have to just uh, you know can you know go with he didn't. You know what I mean? Um, and and I doubt it too. He got Olympic tested. I doubt he was doing it around that time. So. uh with that being said, I just I think his striking improved drastically in, in the Tim Kennedy fight. Uh, I I didn't like that w- the whole situation that happened, but at the same time I I I placed bl- like only thirty percent of the blame on him. I play I placed the rest of the blame on the ref and the UFC officials and his coaches. Yeah, the UFC guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I think that it was just it was just and when you blame that many people, it's just it's a, it's an incident and that you can't you know you don't it's not like something that yeah. you can hate the guy for. I certainly yeah. don't. I mean, he plan on doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially because his corners couldn't speak English, it became this huge fucking mess between him and the, the officials and everything. And uh, it was just a, it was just a, it was a mishap more than anything that that yeah. that you can't really blame him for. And right. uh, I mean, it's not like Tim Kennedy was fighting all the way clean of his. He did grab a glove. So. Exactly. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. When like everybody was all, you know, it looked like, you know. Tim Kenny was playing it clean the whole way either, so yeah. things happen. Yeah, this shit, shit happens, and you yeah. know what? When it costs you a win, I can understand why you get upset. So I don't dock Tim for being, you know, upset about it. He and and I and to the, and it's not like you see him going on Twitter continuously calling Yoel out, calling him a bitch or anything. So it's not like he's being a baby bitch about it. You know, I mean, he bitched about it for one whole day, and I feel like that's fair. I feel like that's fine. And then, you know, because he doesn't, people don't really remember it too much. So, uh, and I, and I think it's because at the same time, you got to realize the skill the dude has. I mean, uh, I remember my favorite fight of his, well, not fight, but finish of his was the first one he did. Remember when his first fight in the UFC? He uh, like it was uh, about two years ago now, and he knocked out a dude with like a flying knee. Yeah, yeah, that was, I forget the dude's yeah. name. His name was Clifford something, but uh, I, I remember thinking like, "Whoa, holy shit!" You know, to see uh, uh, because I remember them talking about his wrestling. Like, okay, this guy's probably gonna throw him around, maybe get some grappling going, and boom, flying knee right out of hell. I was like, "Whoa!" And uh, his striking is starting to match his grappling perfectly and you started to see a real improvement in his grappling. Well, not improvement, but you really started to see him highlight it. In the right. Brad Tavares fight, yeah, uh, yeah, he was throwing Brad around. And Brad, you want to know what's funny about that? Brad, before that fight, had never been taken down before. Yeah, never ever been taken down. And I don't know if that's because of the competition. I'd have to look at like who he's fought and everything. But you know, to to go like I don't know, maybe six or seven or eight even fights. Now I don't know how long Brad's fought, but that was a that fight was last year, and Brad's been in the UFC since 2011. So for three years, nobody took Brad Tavares down until he fought Yoel Romero. So that's just crazy, you know, to showcase your wrestling the way he did against Brad, a guy who'd never been taken down before, and he took Tim Kennedy down. Tim Kennedy's a legit grappler, and he took him down. You know, and he did some damage on the ground too. He 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 he, he took him down. He beat him there, essentially, in my opinion. I don't feel like uh, Tim ever really had a, an advantage on the on the feet, or I mean, on the ground. So Romero is legit, man, and I'm so bummed because I'm because hopefully you can come with me. I ever you know, if you're able to come down here for 184, please come. But uh, you know, that's the pay per view I'm going to be going to, and yeah, um, and so. Yeah, if you can make it, make it, dude, because it's going to be an awesome card regardless. But, yeah, that, he was supposed to fight on the card against Jacare, and so bummed that Jacare got sick with pneumonia, and they, they pulled yeah. that fight. Selfishly, I was hoping that they find him another opponent because I would love to watch that dude live, you know. But uh, it, it seems like they're just going to reschedule the fight for a later date because it was just pneumonia. That will go away in, like, a couple weeks or months or something like that. Um, so, but, yeah, Yoel, he's I'm become one of my favorites. At what happened? Come on down to 185. <laughs> ah. 
that. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, that would be dope if you made it, or if you were able to get to that event, man. Yeah, dude. I'm just saying, though, man, if you come down here, I got premier seating. I'm just saying, those are the tickets. PR. What? You do have that. PR seatings. You know what PR means? That means we get to sit in a booth and just, you know, we have whatever we can't see. Look, because we'll be like in the middle tier part of the arena and we can look down into the cage, <laughs> which would be right. dope. Not only that, we'll have TVs there in case we can't see anything, which I doubt because we'll already be looking into the fucking cage. <laughs> um, but what, what's cool is that we could also order food from there and stuff. And then with the tickets comes like this thing where we'll be able to uh, watch the the fighters for free. Um, like going like like they're kind of like backstage passes, but they're not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so it, it'd be cool to just you know be able to see the fighters, get pictures with them and stuff, and, and all that shit. So I'm just saying that's my bribery right there. That's uh, you that's know. Right. Uh huh. That's the bait. Take it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm bummed that he's not on that card. <laughs> yeah. One one thing I also wanted to address to fans though is like, it seems we're at a time now where the politics of this sport are are just at a like, man. It just seems to be making it sour for a lot of fans, like Zach yeah. and another group, like me and you are in a group called MMA Aliens, and uh, and a lot of people like to to um. Uh, to, 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 you know, get mad about, you know, the politics of MMA and stuff, and they say, oh, the UFC is the worst, and it's this, and it's that, and, you know, uh, it's not, the, you know, it's a joke now, but they still watch, so it's kind of weird that they say all that shit, but the thing with me is, like, I hear these people saying they hate it now, that, they, you know, the sport is a joke, and it's becoming this, it's be and, you know, it's, it's, like, I don't even want to watch anymore, some people legit say that, and I think, like, Wow, that's kind of crazy because no matter what wild shit is going on in the sport, no matter what the UFC does, I mean, short short of just not paying a fighter maybe or, you know, um, you know, just making a complete mockery of the sport, which I don't think they will ever truly do. I mean, in some senses they they make these business decisions that make them look silly, you know? Yeah. But yeah. it's but to, to be honest, it's shit we'll forget about in a couple years, really. It really is. Unless, you know, they keep doing it, which I hope they don't. But, you know, that's a possibility. It could keep happening. But what I think more so is, like, they seem to be falling out of love with this sport for things that don't pertain to why you fell in love with it in the first place. Like, um, like for me, I, I didn't fall in love with the sport because of the politics behind it or because they had good drug testing or because they had all these, these good things going for them. They didn't even have that when I became a fan, you know what I mean? When any of us did, really. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so for, the, because of, you know, the way they handle the John Jones thing, the way Dana White talks about fighters, which I don't like, or, you know, the decisions that they make to find or not find fighters or, or to show favoritism or, 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 you know, to make business decisions based on dollars, which I don't agree with, you know, there's a lot of things I don't agree with. And, you know, hopefully one day, you know, while I continue going to school and trying to really build my name up in, the, in, in this sport in particular as a media member, um, you know, I can maybe, you know, a, you know, address that to a degree, to a higher degree, you know, someday when I'm older, when I'm able to, you know, speak for myself and for others and then, and, and all this other stuff, I, I hope that I can maybe one day make that kind of change. But at the same time, it's never going to be those kind of silly things that makes me fall out of love with the sport. It's always going to be the fighters and the fights. Until the fighters all start sucking and the fights all start boring the shit out of me, I am never going to stop falling in love with this this sport. That's just me. you know. And, and that's just the thing I wanted to comment on because it's just something that I, I saw. Shout out to our admin, Joel, because I had a, like a conversation with him about it uh, for bringing it up and, and talking with me about it. Um, but that's just something I wanted to comment on. I mean, do you have any yeah. thoughts on that? You know, um, you watch it. There's always going to be politics in every business. Definitely. It's yeah. just, it, that's just the nature of the beast. When there's money involved, when you have people who are making decisions for other people that affect other people, then yeah, that's that's a byproduct of business. Yeah. And you have to understand that you know the executives, the owners, they're trying to make money, and they're trying to do it the best way they know how. Uh, and there are there are always going to be times where somebody out there that has no knowledge of the inner workings that disagrees with the decisions. I mean, hey, you're free to disagree, but at the same time, you also have a choice to whether you want to continue watching it or not. 
If you're gonna keep watching it, stop bitching. If you're if you're not happy with what's going on, you have the option to just not follow it anymore, and that's fine. They don't need you. Yeah. Let's be, I mean, I'm not one to mince words, really, but they don't need you to make it. They yeah. need the guys that don't care, that, that just realize that they're trying to put out some entertainment, and they want to see people fight and beat each other up, and that's that. Those are the people they need. They don't need the guys that cry about all the decisions they made. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, I don't agree with a lot of decisions UFC's made. Like, like I said, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't agree with Conor McGregor getting the title shot off of Dennis Seaver. Yeah, but we're gonna watch it. You know, it's not gonna stop us from watching the fight. Yeah, yeah, we're all gonna watch, and that's all that they know that, and that's why they're doing it. Yeah, and that's fine. That's smart. It makes money. That's their job. Their Mm -hmm. job is to make money. Yeah. I mean, because no matter what, at the end of the day, I'm all supporting, I'm all about supporting the fighters, not just the ones in the main event, but the co-main and the rest of the card and the, and the guys coming up, hoping to be on that card because they know it'll be watched and being like, okay, yes, I'm on the Conor McGregor Aldo card. Now people are going to watch me and I'm going to be able to, if I come out, I'll make a name for myself. I can only hope that that's how every mm-hmm. fighter would react to being on a good card like that. You know what I mean? You better believe they are. That's. That's their ticket. Exactly. That's their, if they're not the guy doing it, that's their ticket to get in. They got to get on those kind of cards. Exactly. So of course they're going to support these things. These guys are going to ride all these top name guys' coattails as far as they, they'll take them, and you can't fault them for that. Yeah, exactly. That see, that's the kind of that's like the that's the, the 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 other side of the coin to this whole thing. With no matter what it is you hate about it, somewhere along the line it's benefiting somebody else. And if it's going to benefit the fighter, if anything that ever comes out of any bad decision that I don't agree with will benefit the fighter, it's not going to bug me for that long. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. and that's that's the thing about me because I know that this will benefit other fighters and it will get some money in certain people's pockets, preferably the fighters because I don't, I do not think that they get paid enough. I do. They agree. don't. Yeah, I don't think. But as they long don't. as whatever they can do, whatever that can happen that can make them more money, if it's gonna do it. Screw it. I know that um, Connor getting the title shot upsets some people, but think about like other like I know you won't, but <laughs> but for anybody thinking about just the Conor Aldo fight, the bigger picture is for the fighters that want to be on that card, make the money and, and, you know, and, and, and get, and get popping with, you know, their career, you know, being on a card like that, that's their chance to really okay, yeah. look I'm on this card. I got to get this shit going, get a knockout, get a sub, get a bonus, make, you know, exact, that's the kind of attitude that every fighter should have for every event. But at the same time, you know what I mean? At being yeah, in the honor, UFC, honor, there used honor. to be a time where just fighting for the UFC did that. I don't think it's that way anymore. <laughs> but, uh, uh, they, they not for everybody. They have spoiled those guys a little bit, made them feel like they're entitled to everything. But now you need some hungry fighters out there that don't mm-hmm. mind. You know, the only guys that care that are upset about uh, McGregor or other guys that getting undue shots. Or the guys that could have had those shots that did put in their dude. Oh, definitely. Like That's Frankie like, Edgar, if he's pissed, Frankie, which he doesn't seem like he is. Yeah. Every single right to be mad. Yeah. He has every single right in the world to be mad that he didn't get that shot over McGregor. Definitely. He does. He absolutely does. He put on. He's beaten better people. He's got a better record. He's got a better resume of wins. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he got passed over for the money. Plus, on paper, I think Frankie beats Connor. By the way. Uh, that's yeah. just my opinion. I'm gonna throw that out there. I don't care. You know, yeah. I think Frankie beats Connor. Yeah. Even if Connor yeah. beat Aldo, I still think Frankie beats Connor. <laughs> yeah, that's Frankie just me. Aldo's gonna beat Connor. Uh, I I think Mendez could even beat Connor. So yeah, it's all good. Let, the the let, the Seaver fight. Connor, yeah, let Connor get his though. He'll yeah. get his. He's gonna get title shot, and you know it'll make money. Or he won't keep him out for very long. That's just how it's gonna work. Yeah. For for fans that don't know too, we announced on the page uh, that fight's supposedly gonna go down at UFC 187 Memorial Day weekend on, in May, uh, and it's supposedly actually gonna be in Vegas, which is a surprising yeah. turn. I thought it was either gonna be in Ireland or Brazil or somewhere where they could make it like a big, like a uh, stadium kind of event. But I guess they're not gonna go with that. But I'm sure. Uh, what I understand, there's some problems in. Uh... Ireland, as far as I, I don't know for sure, oh, but shit. I've read 
So there's a curfew issue over in Iowa. There's a what? A curfew issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. And with the main audience being in here in the States, you know, that, that six-hour difference is going to be a problem. Yeah, they could, we couldn't do that. Mm-mm. <laughs> We're too lazy. <laughs> couldn't do we can't, that. We just can't do that. So. Nah, I wonder why they couldn't do it in Brazil, which is that. Because they're yeah. obviously down to party till 5 in the morning. They don't give a shit. Yeah, Brazil would have yeah, lined up better with us, too. But at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree with, you know, fighting at the Challengers' home, you know, home field if you will the challengers well the only reason they would have done that strictly is because the fan base there has like quadrupled in a sense it has. so it has. but it see was. i mean i think it could be successful in brazil definitely you know yeah. especially with how much brazil has started to hate on connor <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what i mean um <clears throat> bad about brazil is they're, they're already they're all ready to kill you exactly man i remember i don't know if you saw this there was like a press conference connor did well, not a press conference. He did like a and a in Brazil of all yeah. fucking places. I don't know what they thought they were doing there. But it was half of it was just them going up to the mic and death threatening him. It was like, you know, oh, we'll cut your head off and kick it on a soccer field. Or, oh, fuck you. If you come down here, we'll stab you. Da, 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 da. And, and he's just like egging him on. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about? And he was just making all these jokes to them and shit about how yeah. shitty their, their country is and all this stuff. Kind of like Chael did, but like not as not as not as much of a dick about it. <laughs> like Chael was just joking around, like making jokes, like make, like legitimate just jokes that you can make. He wasn't saying it to anybody's straight face and laughing about it and being a you know. <laughs> I, I feel like Connor was being more of a dick about it, and to this point, you don't even know if it's a character or not. I guess we'll find out in the later future. Um, with Connor, it it seems like he's just a little out there, but uh. Oh, he- off, dude, but you know what? <laughs> it works for him. It works for him, man. It gets How attention. It what did you think of that shit where he flipped over the cage? We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> where he got, where he flips out of the cage and just goes there right up go. to Aldo. Okay. What I loved about it was Aldo didn't didn't he miss didn't a push. beat. He was like, dude, you silly bitch. He didn't care at all. He was just standing there. He didn't back up. He didn't put his fists up. He just smiled. He didn't do anything. I was like, whoa. You know that's kind of scary if you're if you're looking at that and going, dude, Connor, you didn't even scare this guy at all. You know you're thinking about like, whoa, Connor's crazy. He's he's gonna challenge him. He's gonna beat him. Da da da. You don't think about like, well, okay, Jose just stood there and laughed at his face right there and didn't back up, didn't do anything. I'm thinking like, wow, you know, because Jose now that Hennen's not there, I think is the number two pound for pound best fighter in the world. Um. And, and I think that there's a good reason for that, too, just as there was for Burrell. You never know what could happen in that fight. If Connor wins, it would be insane. He'd have to pull uh, an improvement in skill like TJ did in the sense yeah. that I don't think that Connor's really shown anything in the last five fights that tell me that he's going to be able to beat Jose Aldo. Now, TJ didn't do the same thing, didn't do, like, kind of had the same thing going for him. I didn't see anything other than maybe the Mike Easton fight. The Mike Easton fight, when I went looking back on it, was kind of a clue. Like, oh, if he pulls that shit, like, but, but not, like, he really had to amplify that performance to, uh, to the nth degree. You know what I mean? And, uh, so if Connor can do that, then maybe he beats Alba. Yeah. But, uh, not, like I said, nothing I've seen from him thus far convinces me that he that he beats Aldo. Mendez kind of convinced me because of, of the, the full-scale ass whoopings he was given laying out to everybody he fought. You know what I mean? Going into the Aldo fight, and sure enough, it was yeah. a close fight. That was easily the closest fight uh, that Aldo's ever had because he lost a, a round or two in that fight, definitely. Against uh, Frankie, it was also a close fight, but it wasn't as violent and as fun to watch, on it, in my opinion. But, uh, right. but that's just me. I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, but that, that's just me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Frankie get the shot and uh, for uh, Connor to fight Chad Mendez. Yeah. Oh, another oh. announcement that we didn't even talk about. Ricardo Lamas and Chad Mendez scheduled that's to that's fight uh, in, I think, April. April something, yeah, April something in Fairfax, Virginia, UFC Fight Night 63. Now, that's a good fight. It will be in the afternoon. I'm not sorry? It will be an afternoon card here in the States, not, in the, not at night. That's some bullshit. Yeah. Wait, yeah. is it on a Wednesday? April 4th? Look that up. Not Saturday, I believe. Is it? Okay, that's good. 
Because if it was on a Wednesday, I'd be so mad. Because I'd be able to watch it, but nobody else would be able to watch it with me. Huh? Nobody would be able to watch that. People work during. Yeah, well, sometimes the UFC puts cards on on a Wednesday, and I don't. I never thought that made sense. I mean, unless it was late at night, but even still, I didn't think it made sense. It didn't even make sense for ticket sales. Not a lot. Not everybody could call out work silly. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of that fight, Chad Mendes Ricardo? I think Mendes wins that, but yeah, you know, Mendes. I think yeah, I think Ricardo is a good fight. I mean, I, yeah, I like Mendes. Yeah, so. I like that fight. Mendes is has shown that I think I think he's kind of like in that like uh like um what is it? like a Junior Dos Santos kind of area now where you know he's lost twice to the champ, but he's he's shown that he can really con- compete with the champ to the sense to like to the to the uh. To the point where you think like anybody else he fights he'd probably just beat you know until yeah. he fights the chain like like the same kind of boat Benavides is in right now you know yep beats anybody but the champ that's where Chad Mendes that's is like right the now. shittiest thing to be in that kind that, of position that, has to suck. that does man that's I mean for Junior it might not suck as much because he already beat Kane once at least and was the champ for like a year so um. So, I mean, he had, like, you know, he was able to enjoy the fruits of, of being a champion and all that such, but being back down there in that position, just knowing you're never going to be able to fight the champ again unless, you know, uh, you take, like, a fight on short notice kind of thing happens. Um, like, that, just, the, uh, man, it's got to be such a drag, dude. <laughs> just in my opinion. Uh, I can't imagine how much that would suck. But, yeah, that fight, that's going to be a good fight. And, uh... Mendez, I gotta believe, will win that. But Ricardo, man, hmm, he, I like, I want to like him, but something about him just makes me not want to like him. I don't. <laughs> that he beat Dennis Ruiz, is that it? Well, that was there, but I mean, like, that didn't make me hate, like, not like him any less. I mean, I already kind of was whatever about him going into that fight. That didn't make me like him less. I was bummed, yeah, because I'm a big Benavides fan, or Benavides, Bermudez fan. Um, but um. Yeah, it it just seems like, you know, there are certain perform like the Jose Aldo fight, I felt like he didn't really perform the way he could have. Like, if he'd have come out as good as, say, like when he fought Eric Cope, you remember that fight? Yeah. Where he just elbowed his face into half, you know? Yep. It was, <laughs> it was yeah. like, if he'd have came out as aggressive as that, he didn't. He really didn't. There wasn't a single moment in that fight where I'm watching him thinking, like, man, this guy needs like, this guy is turned up right now. Like, he's coming after him, da 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 Like, I was sitting there half the time going, man, come on, get more aggressive. You know, get after him and stuff, you know? It, I never felt that from him, like, <laughs> in that fight. I don't know if that's me. I don't know if you agree, but that's just me. And that fight was a year ago, so I don't know if anybody can remember that far back when it, when you think of how many events were last year. But, um, because we've had, like, if you go back to, like, 2009, 2010, you think there's been like two years worth of events in one year last year, you know? Pretty right. much, dude. Yeah, and it's just, and and I'm glad they took like at least a few down because instead of like like what were there last year like 50 events? Yeah. Some crazy, and then uh, yeah, 54. There were 54 events, yeah. and from what I understand, they're taking like 10 of them away, so it's gonna be like 44, which I guess is somewhat of an improvement. Not as much craziness going on. You know, yeah, with prices, you know, some of those weeks there were two cards in one in one yeah. day. Yeah, I think they need to not do that ever again. Cause that's just you know, not that it's not like, not that it'll keep me from watching. I'll still watch, but I just don't think that's good for them overall. I don't think a lot of people are willing to do that. Not like I am. You know what I mean? Like I know you yeah. are, and other uh, other other of our admins, I'm sure are. Uh, but just like, your average fan is not. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, especially when some of these cards are like in the six in the morning and shit, and you're just like, "Whoa, too early, man!" Saturday morning, you're tripping. I uh, just can't do it, man. And uh, yeah, I wonder when the next Fight Pass card is. You know, they haven't actually had one this, thus far, and I don't think there are any scheduled. Fine by me. <laughs> well, not fine by me. I have a fight pass. Put some events on. I, I paid for the damn thing. You need to give me some events. Whoops. Whoops. Let's look. I kind of want to see. I'm going to look this up real quick. Anything else you wanted to bring up with me discuss about? Uh, you know, um. I know I brought you, like, all last minute onto this podcast, but. Uh, it's all good, man. Yeah. Uh. Here's some UFC events. Here we go. Let's look this up. 
Fight night that's going on in Brazil. Is this a fight pass card? I don't think it is. Hmm. I'm amazed that Sweden was down to have a fox card on their uh, on their on you know on their list of stuff to get done. You know. Yeah. Because I mean, because it has to fit with us. So I think Stockholm has like a five hour time dif or five hour time difference from you. Those, so yeah. about an eighty hour time difference from me. So what? It's like you know. So it, like so that event will start at three o'clock my time. Which means by the time the pre it'll be eleven. Whoa! <laughs> wow, man. I mean, I know Brazil can get down like that. Uh, I've never seen any other country get down like that. So I mean, they just gonna have to they have to deal with that. Like <laughs> so. Twenty five. Wow. There is an event scheduled to go down in Germany this year. That will probably be on Fight Pass, but that's not until the summer. And then other than that, there are no fight pass cards. <laughs> I mean, I know you're cool with it. You don't have one. You don't really care. But, you know. Well, you still get to see those, you know, very first fights. Uh, I've been doing I've been watching them in chronological order since, like, the summer of last year. And I'm at UFC 62 right now. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. It took me, you know, because I watch, like, one a day or one every two days or so. But there are all these fight night cards as well. As well, I'm trying to bring in, like, pride cards in there as well, you know. Um, and then there are weeks where I just go without it, so, you know, I spread them out, I'm at UFC 62, and that's when they started incorporating the fight nights and the tough finales and all that, um, yeah, I'm at UFC 62, about to watch when, uh, Randy Couture puts a butt spanking on Tim Sylvia, I don't know if you remember that one, <laughs> oh, it's pretty awesome, uh, that, that, that big, that, that big papa beating he gives him, oh, man. Yeah. Glorious. <laughs> well, Gary puts it the best way. He's like, it's like a man beating a child, and it really was. It was like a man beating a big ass, fat, retarded kid. It's crazy. I <laughs> oh, loved it. And I'm a big Randy fan, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah that's crazy. There's all these uh, events going on that we have planned thus far. Not a single one on that. So, uh, I remember like the first, like last year, it was like four within the first three months or so. If I'm not mistaken, like the very first event was in China, all that, all that nonsense. That's good. Who are you most excited to see fight this year? Anderson Silva. Yeah. <laughs> Just cause you know, cause he's he had a really Silva. bad 2013, hasn't fought at all last year. You could see the old guy back at it. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna beat Diaz. But you never know, and you never know. Yeah, never know. I think Diaz's best shot in that is to, you know, take it to the ground if he can. I don't know if he can. I doubt he can. But um. yeah, we'll see what he does. Also, uh, besides Anderson Silva, I'm pretty uh, excited to see Kane return. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, let me look it up. I forget. But Kane and Fabricio is scheduled for a fight in May. In May. Really? Yeah, they fight in May in Mexico City. Yeah, but like what numbered event? Uh, 187 is going down to Memorial Day. 186, I believe, is happening somewhere else. 186, and, uh, yeah, 186 is uh, Montreal. Just, Montreal, so it was 188? It's kind of weird. Yeah, and I don't see the Mexico City event on the on this list of UFC events, so it might not even be finalized. As far as, that's just what I, like from what I gather here, looking at this, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. But we'll see. Uh, either way, I'm, yeah, I, I would love to see Kane come back. I, I'm so desperate to see that fight. I was bummed when it didn't happen uh, last year. But, yeah, man, I, it's not, I'm a, I, I'm a Kane casual fan. Like, I don't really, like, go too nuts when he fights. But I love watching him fight because it's like, you know, he is one of the best in the world. That's hands down. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, uh, man, and to see how great Fabricio has really improved, it's gonna be interesting. I think. I think. Uh, I think he's gonna surprise some people. Yeah, he he has made some major strides uh, since coming back to the UFC. Honestly, 
Oh yeah, definitely, man. In this game, so you know, I you know, taking out Hunt the way he did, that was incredible. That was my knockout of the year last year. That was legit. Like when we were doing the knockout of the year awards, that was my knockout of the year. Yeah. Because I think in, in the main event, like it was between that or Mark Hunt's knockout of Nelson as far as like degree of difficulty, but I feel like it's just as difficult to knock out Mark Hunt as it is Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. looking at the knockout power of guys that have been knocked out, Hunt's only been knocked out by, or no, uh, Melvin Manhoff. And Melvin Manhoff was Melvin Manhoff. And then Roy Nelson was knocked out by Andre Arlovsky, and that was back in the day when Arlovsky was a motherfucker, man. <laughs> so... With that being said, I mean, you got anything else you want to bring up? Uh, let's see. What did I, what was I looking at? Oh, man. Free Pee Wee. Free. <laughs> <laughs> they taste him, bro. They taste him. Free Pee Wee. Let's look oh, that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, basically. He ran from the cops. I already got the skinny on it. He ran from the cops. He ran from the cops. Yeah, he ran from the cops. Had a woman and child. In the Him car. and BJ. BJ Penn, man, they just had a weekend, man. That's kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, golly. BJ awesome. Penn got detained, uh, and I read the full report, if I remember it correctly. He was at somebody's place at a party, something like that. It was a Sunday night, I believe. And he just got drunk, got a little rambunctious, started trying to fight somebody. And then his friend, like, pushed him, like, trying to get him away from fighting that person. And then he hit, hits his friend. Like, what a dick move. Um, yeah. And then, and then yeah, like, and then his man. friend is, like, trying to grapple with him. And then he knees his friend in the head. And then, like, he ran from the scene when the cops got called. And then two miles down, he was caught at a, at a hotel and got detained. And then was released pending investigation. So, that's bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, Dave Herman was arrested late last night, uh, or I guess since this will be up tomorrow, I guess it was uh, Tuesday night, or Monday night, I mean, uh, the 20, no, 19th? Yeah, Monday the 19th, he was he was uh, arrested after resisting law enforcement with a vehicle, battery against law yes. enforcement, and yeah. neglect of a, de- of a dependent. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Neglect of a yeah, dependent? basically, well, yeah, child. See, he uh, he had a kid in the car with him. Oh he had a shit! Kid, no way. And I guess. Yeah, they were in the car Whoa, with him. Whoa! I didn't know out. that. So, you know, when he got himself arrested, he's basically neglecting the child at that point. Whoa! That well, that makes sense. But whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Dang! I didn't know there was a kid in the car. It doesn't even say that flat out that there was another person in the car. It just says yeah, that was, charge yeah, is there, was, and I didn't know what it meant. Whoa! That's crazy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and okay. He, Faces he three. got from... aggressive with the officers, and that's why they tased him. Yeah, I get that. And so, yeah. okay, the fighter, he was spotted speeding down a highway. This is how it all started. He was spotted speeding down a highway with no taillights, not safe, or headlights, also not safe, at 1.13 in the morning. Then led officers on a three-mile pursuit before stopping at a gas station <laughs> and approaching officers in an aggressive manner. I kind of wonder yeah. what that means. Does he get out of the car and just, like, come up to him, like, what the fuck, bro? Oh, he was subsequently tased and taken into custody after failing to comply with multiple warnings to get on the ground. Well, that's what happens, I guess, when you're being a silly bitch, running from the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Free Pee Wee. Oh, man. It even states that. That would be the end of Pee Wee <laughs> in this article that I'm reading it off of. Oh, man. Pee Wee had a big adventure, indeed. Yeah, he hasn't fought in a while. He didn't fight. He hasn't fought since last May. It's been a minute for him. That's crazy. Yeah, well, if he had a kid in the car, I don't feel bad for him anymore. I kind of did, only because you never know how crazy cops are. But if you have a kid in the car, you're being a little silly and irresponsible. So with BJ, he's being silly too. Getting drunk, you kind of do some shit. Shit's going to happen, but. That sucks. It's BJ, you know. So you you want to see a guy out of retirement, not sucking at life, you know, all of a sudden. So I hope he gets his shit together. Yeah, you know, he, he's got to be depressed. Got to be a little depressed after the way his career is pretty much over. Yeah, man. Like I said, man. If he'd have came, if he'd have just said, I know Dana was calling for it and fans were calling for it. I didn't care because if he'd have fought again, I would have watched. But. Unless BJ just knew 
that the way he fought against Frankie that last fight, that that was how he was always going to fight, I, I'd have been saying, yeah, you should probably not fight too. But you never know. I mean, who knows what, what really attributed to that god-awful striking style of his in that fight. But <laughs> if, he, if that's how he was going to fight moving forward, then yeah, I would have been like, yeah, no, retire, please, because this is just silly. You know, it's not like Bob Sapp where he just sucks all, you know, and he's just kind of costing himself fights and all that such. It's a much different thing. Uh, that's why I feel like um, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't have been uh, as big a deal when, when people calling him to retire as far as like com comparing it to Bob Sapp's situation. I'm only calling for that because people were comparing it to that, to that same scenario, which is crazy. And so I feel like I, it's crazy because you think, why would you even bring that up? But I've had some arguments with people, and it's crazy that I even have to bring it up. It's, it's nuts. It's absolute madness. But I think with that, we're going to close out. This has been an awesome podcast. I had a lot of fun with this. I think that this should just be the style from now on. Let's be real. I've been in the last few podcasts. I've been trying to sound like I'm more professional. I think it's just more – it's easier for me to just, you know, let loose you know, in a sense, especially with guys like you because you guys are awesome at just being real and talking like, you know, exactly what you, what you want to just say and getting it out. So, um, Jonas, you're the man. I appreciate having you on. Uh, next time hey, I have you on, hopefully there will be more guys on here. But talking to you one on one is always fun, as always. You know. Yeah, so, bro. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Y'all be hearing more from me, so it's all good. Yeah. Glad to be a part of. It. Appreciate you, man. Right, check out our page, MMA discussion. Holler at the boys at Sports of Anarchy, and uh, we'll be back. We will be back. Yeah, if you guys want to listen to us on the go, please subscribe to us on iTunes. If that takes up too much data on your phone, we're available on Stitcher, which is a, a podcast slash music app that you can uh, that you can subscribe to for free. It takes up no data at all. So if that's the easier way to go for you guys, please go ahead and uh, go, go on Stitcher. Stitcher is the way to go. You know, it's a, I use it for. I, I'm also subscribed on iTunes just because it's our podcast. <laughs> but. Uh, but Stitch is the way to go, I think, the best way. Uh, it's free as well. You don't have to buy anything. All you got to do is make a profile like you do for Pandora. Other than that, it's the same thing as Pandora, but with podcasts. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of good podcasts on there as well that I've listened to, a lot of science ones or, or even ones just for, you know, like life stuff. You know, it's a great podcast to get onto. They're not even our sponsor, and I'm already telling you to get them and promote them because they really are a great, uh, a great product to get for your phone. Uh, with that being said, I appreciate you guys going on MMA Discussion mm -hmm. Facebook page, sportsofanarchy.com. Hit up our sponsors, submissionfc.com and mmaprofit.com. Well, we appreciate those guys uh, for, for giving us an outlet for this podcast. We appreciate you. Um, next podcast, we'll probably have – Sometime this week before the before the Fox card, if not, then our next one will definitely be uh, after it to talk about it because who does or doesn't want to talk about that fight depending on how it goes, but me. So we'll <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we appreciate you, fans. Thank you, Jonas, again for coming on, fans. Uh, till next time, later. Later. <laughs>